I build the taste of whatever we're cooking and all of that. In the same manner, that is how we are supposed to exist within the space we find ourselves and all of that. I always tell people, my folks in the office, I tell them this, especially my downlines. Say, you are one of two things. You are either an asset or a liability. Now, I've said it severally here. Uh, you are in an organization and all of a sudden you tell them, look, I am leaving. I want to go. <laughs> if they ask you when and not why, you know that you have been a liability. If they say when, are you leaving? Because you just, at least you, you are just an answer to their prayer. He has finally decided to go. So they, when they ask when, you know you have been a liability. When they ask why, you know you have been an asset to that environment. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to be doing this uh, afternoon is we are going to talk to ourselves. Uh, somebody said career, career guidance and all of that. When I saw the, when I saw the, the story, it was my wife that shared it with me because, uh, to be quite honest with you, uh, I exited, exited some of the platforms because I was getting repeated messages, so I had to stick to a few. So uh, unfortunately, I don't know the platform where she got that. She forwarded it to me. Was it not Friday or so? Or there, but I saw it on Friday. I was like, oh, these people are very serious. And that made me a little bit nervous. <laughs> it made me a little bit nervous. I look, if you fall your hand, it's over. It's over. You can't afford to fall your hand. So quite frankly, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what I always do, I might not look or dress spiritual. I'm a very spiritual man. <laughs> I might not be wearing the suits like Pastor Yinka, the turtlenecks and what have you. <laughs> I'm a very spiritual man, but my spirituality is on a very, very principled level. As in, as in I want to do business with God. Uh, we have some guests in the house, my wife's uh, older sister and my mother-in-law, and we're having a conversation yesterday for yesterday, and I said this to them, some people don't see God finish. Oh, bless God, bless God, by God. Hey, what thing happened? Some people don't see God finish. He is our father. That concept must be there. In as much as we know that, okay, yes, uh, uh, through the death of Jesus, we now have access to the Father. But He is our Father. And I said this to them. Intimacy makes God a priority. But familiarity takes Him for granted. The fact that we come every now and then, is it not church? Is it this and all of that? We tend to overlook and take certain things for granted. If you've been through the corridors of a hospital, each time I am driving home, I'm driving up the hill at Ikeja. Uh, what you have on your left is Lassut. And that building you see when you are climbing is pediatric department. If you have actually, if I have actually driven through that place in the evening, say from 7, 30, 8 p.m. in the night, you see the lights are up in the pediatric department. You see wires. Some children are on life support. Their parents have been there for three, four months just trying to uh, save the life of the child and all of that. And you drive through all of these places and say, God, thank you for life. It's a privilege to be alive. And bottom line, that life is not meant just for you alone. That life is meant to make a difference in somebody else's life. So that's why I have a couple of videos that I'm going to be showing to us. Uh, I have, I am not doing this alone. I'm soliciting the support of Dr. Miles Moreau of Blessed Memory. I'm soliciting the support of a couple of other guys uh, uh, who are going to help us through this dis discussion and conversation. Now, uh, We'll start with this video. I just want us to have a very quiet and a very pious moment. Although I don't look pious, let's have a very pious moment. As to, okay, it's important. Let's share as a family, as a fellowship, and all of that. Uh, I was telling Pastor Taffy this afternoon that look, my heart is pained. Pain in the sense that uh, some of us have had the same prayer point for five years, it's still there. The same prayer point is still there for five years. And I'm asking myself, when am I going to get out of this rottenness? I think it's not that God has changed or God hasn't answered our prayers and all of that. And it may perhaps a slight adjustment in our disposition to life, a slight adjustment uh, to our perception of life. Uh, my older brother in the U.S. will always tell me that your perception is your reality. So perhaps a slight adjustment to certain things uh, we help us keep us in perspective vis a vis the accomplishment of our objectives, our goals, our dreams, our vision, etc. etc. The list goes on and on. So, ladies and gentlemen, I really want us to be free with ourselves 
And uh, life is more than mascara. You know mascara. Life is more than those artificial eyelids and what have you. It's way more than uh, the uh, Billy Jane or what do you call it. It's way more than that. It's way more than all the calisthenics around us and what have you. It's about making a difference. It's about impact. Somebody asked me, oh, are you a motivation speaker? I said, never and a thousand times no. I do value addition service. Value added service. You can't be with me 10 minutes and you don't, there's no value. There is no value. It's, it's impossible. And that's the whole essence. People say, you are too serious. Yes. Yes, I'm too serious. Because at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, it is not what you have acquired. It is who you have become. Who you have become. It's a metamorphosis. Our elementary biology told us that metamorphosis is the series of changes in the life cycle of an organism. From the egg to the larva or the pupa. To the, from the egg to the larva or the pupa or whatever. And all that, then to the adult stage. So you keep shedding off, taking on new things. Like they say in biology, what is growth? Growth is the increase in size and weight of an organism due to the incorporation of new protoplasm in the cells. So when, when you see anybody growing, like I, I saw a couple of kids who were toddlers. Now, you are seeing them growing. How are they growing? The cells are dividing. It's going through meiosis and mitosis and what have you. The cells are dividing and the child is growing. But scripture puts it in a better way. And the child grew and was strong in spirit. And the child grew and was strong in spirit and in favor with man and with God. So ladies and gentlemen, I just want to sort of help us settle in and understand the whole essence of why we do what we do. The whole essence of why we do business with life on a daily basis. It's not just for the fun of... And there's this other part I really... I will address whilst we're having a conversation and all of that. It's not a bad competition. Which I sense at times. It's not about who wearing the best dress, the nicest of shoes and all of that. It's way more than that. It's about making a difference. Like they say in the Pigeon Palace, now who you help? <laughs> who, you, who you help? <laughs> what has that got to do with the price of beans and garlic in the market? So the bottom line is this, ladies and gentlemen, we are all in this together. As somebody once said that we are only as strong as our weakest link. Only as strong as our weakest link. If we all do well, we bless God. If one person amongst us is a weakling, we have a problem. Because it's a value chain. And everybody has got a part to play in that value chain. So, we all enter this year with a very clear objective. Restart. Read this. I don't know what the is. I don't know what the is. For myself, the only re I gave to myself was a man. Can you remember? When we had our session together. I can Eh? Not repeat. Uh, no. Reinvent. Thank you. That was what I gave to myself. I need to reinvent myself. Little wonder, I'm a, a bit active in church. Thanks to that woman. She has been on my case uh, since God know, knows when and all of that. Because one of the critical concerns I've had was the fact that growth has to be deliberate. Growth has to be intentional. It's not by happenstance. It has to be intentional. And if it's intentional, there are certain things we have got to do so that we'll see the results. Uh, uh, currently in Harvard, there is this stuff they do in Harvard. It's called the four DX. The four disciplines of execution. The first one is the weak, the widely important goal. Then the second one is the lead action. There are certain actions you take to achieve that goal. And the third aspect of that is uh, maintain a compelling scorecard. And the fourth one is keep a cadence of accountability. Because you need to be accountable for yourself and to yourself. As to every milestone I put in front of me, uh, where am I at uh, with this? Where am I at with that? You know, this attitude of que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. We just leave everything to chance. It doesn't work. Especially if you are very, very poised to get into the corporate world. Uh, there is nothing like happenstance. 
It's either you are delivering the goods or you are not delivering the goods. I, currently, in my place of work, uh, I have a new CEO uh, and who is there, I've known before now. And uh, when he showed up, the guy was giving me hell. I said, hell. <laughs> I said, real hell. I'm in management meeting and you are hauling all kinds of uh, insults at me. I'm like, where is this coming from? Only for the fellow to call me a couple of days later and told me he was playing, playing out his script. Uh, we've known ourselves way back and all of that. And uh, he felt he needed to use me to send a message to everybody in the organization that, look, there's a new sheriff in town. So you better get your act together. Is it that my way or the highway? <laughs> you know what that means at the end of the day. So he apologized profusely uh, for the way he came across and all of that. I said, you know what? If this is your game plan, let's keep it that way. Uh, I don't want...
I'm just sort of giving us some time to at least try and get something into our system so that by the time we're talking, you know, in scriptures, Jesus Christ feeds the people before giving them the word. Because <laughs> if he doesn't feed them, and all he was saying was, they were telling him, carry your career and find your level. So he feeds them with the word. That's why after they kept on following him, he got to a point where he started giving them the mysteries of the kingdom. You will eat my flesh. You will drink my blood. Some of them said, this on hard saying. Who can hear it? He started retreating and all of that. He turned to the seventies. Sorry, to the twelve. Will he also go away? And Peter replied, to whom shall we turn to? For that we know has the words of eternal life. So for me, I think that makes appropriate sense. Uh, it's not just about the crowd. It's about the value of what you get whilst you are engaging a master. So, B, I think we can get right into all the subject for the day. So let me move on to the next slide so that we can talk about what we're talking about. So, can, can we, have you uh, uh, expanded the screen? This is what it is. Okay, great. So you and your career uh, is what we want to talk about. Guys, Jaden, 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 please keep it down, keep it down. So, uh, your career and you. Uh, I am not going to be very much focused on your career. Uh, surprisingly, I'm going to be very much focused on you as an individual. Uh, somebody once said is that when you change the way man thinks, you don't have to bother about his actions. Fundamentally, is the individual. Uh, I have a quote. Uh, you, I quoted several individuals today. I have my own quote that is credited to me. And uh, what I need to do is to trademark that quote. And as it goes to us, the difference between ruin, the, the difference between running an organization, R O U double N I N G, and ruining that same organization is the letter I. They are the same number of letters, but just the difference is the is the I. The difference between running or driving a life and ruining that life is the letter I. The difference between running an organization or driving an organization or ruining that organization is the letter I. And the I there represents the individual. The individual. So you are an integral part of the makeup of any society, any organization. And the values you carry, you hold, and that you as a, you as a bit has a cascading effect on everything around you. Uh, I'm sorry to mention her name, and I will mention her name, Oprah Winfrey. She says this, I'm very mindful of the kind of energy you bring into my office. The moment I sense it, I tell her, you know what, can we schedule this meeting? Because energy matters a lot. It's neither created nor destroyed, but it goes from one form to another. So a case in point is the bicycle dynamo. I don't want to get into physics and all of that this afternoon. So uh, your career and you as an individual, because at the end of the day, if you sum it all up, you are a product of your career. How well your career uh, 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 makes progress, it's all dependent on you as an individual. So that's why the you is what we want to address today. I remember back in the day when we were in school, there's this common slogan we usually uh, play around with, that there is a you in you that makes you the you that you are. There is a you in you that makes you the you that you are. So, uh, briefly, I just want to ask, what's it all about when you hear the word career? I really want to pick our brains uh, when we hear the word career. Uh, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word career? Can anybody just help us in this conversation? I want us to be swift so that we can leave this place uh, soon enough. Okay. Somebody said, what you do for a living? That's, that's very important because what I pick out uh, fragments of the statements you make and all of that. So what you do. So there is a doing and there is a reason for doing what you're doing. He said, what you do for a living. Is it what you do for a living or what you do to earn a living? No. He's made his point. So you are saying what you do to what? Earn a living. That's another one. What you do for a living, what you do to earn a living. Is there any contrary opinion? What's a career to you? It's a path. A path. A path to life. Great. 
So that's career path. Anybody else that wants to help us in that conversation? Okay, let me just proceed for time's sake. These are just definitions from either the internet, uh, the Oxford Dictionary, or Wikipedia. Uh, because it's important, uh, we have a retinue of information out there for us to know what this is all about. You know, there's something I was telling some folks a couple of years ago. We just glossed through scriptures, and there are certain English in scriptures we don't know what it's all about. For instance, you read things like the works of the flesh, lasciviousness. What is lasciviousness? But we just hear it's a bad word. But what is it? We need to know. They say etymology is the study of words. You need to know what it means. So what is like you hear evil concupiscence? What is concupiscence? Haven't we read it in scriptures? But we just gloss through it and we just walk away. I need to understand if I'm actually doing it, I don't know. You get what I'm saying? So at times, this is just hearing from Pius now. When you are reading your Bible at times, hold a dictionary by the side. To actually understand what those things talk, talk about. You, you hear things like um, uh, evil concupiscence, uh, 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 lasciviousness. There are so many grammar in there. So you are like, okay, okay, I get it, I get it. Then somebody will now say, eh, just try and read it within context so that you can get a message. But find out what it means so that you can make some progress. So I think it's important. So it says here, an occupation undertaken for a significant period of a person's life and with opportunities for what? Progress. That's heavy. Very heavy. An occupation that I think for a single period of a person's life and with opportunities for progress. Now the question I'm asking is this. If I'm doing stuff and I've been there one, two, three, four, five years and all of that, this latter part of this definition is not showing, it's not showing up. I should start asking myself questions because that is not, is no longer a career. It's a job. We'll get there. There's a between a career and a job. We'll get there. One cannot exist without the other very well, but there are some differences between a career and a job. So an occupation undertaken for a significant period of a person's life, significant, underlined, and with opportunities for progress. So if I'm not, if there seem to be any, uh, no form of progress uh, vis-a-vis what I have uh, cut out to be a career, then I have a problem. I'm sorry, uh, my people work on Sundays, so I just look up emails and I've responded to several emails today. Uh, so that's it. Uh, we have to address that concern. And that is the reason why we're having this conversation. So we need to address those concerns. Uh, we can no longer just sit somewhere. You know what scripture says? It says the path of the just is what? Like a shiny light. And it does what? It shines brighter and what? Brighter. So brighter is one level and brighter is another level onto what? The perfect day. So there is some form of progression. So if there is stagnation in that, in my experience, if there is some stagnation, I have to start asking myself some questions. So for me, uh, uh, I know to a very large extent uh, there could be some extraterrestrial forces, so to speak, that could be uh, militating and mitigating against my per- perceived progress and all that. I understand all of that. And like uh, we heard today in church and all of that, all of that I'll be taken care of. So we are seated with him, far above. Seated, far above. City position is a position of what? R O E S T, rest. He said, My presence shall go before you, and I will give you rest. Because uh, Moses cried out, From whence shall we be distinguished from, people's, from the people, people of the earth? Because he knew very evidently that, look, if God is not for you, you ain't going to make progress. Because he knew what was at stake. He knew he had a tall order. He said, how can we be distinguished from the people of the earth? If not that your presence go with us. He said, look, my presence shall go before you. And I will what? Give you rest. Let's look at this definition from the Oxford English Dictionary. It says, defines the word career as a person's course or what? Progress through life or a distinct portion of life your course of progress through life so you can see if there's anything i'm taking out from these two definitions is the word progress uh it's not a noun it's supposed to be a verb but for some of us it's a noun it's just there a name of a place or thing that's it but a verb is what an action word 
it's supposed to be a verb, not a noun. So it's vitally important for us to uh, uh, relate that understanding with where I am right now. Uh, has there been any visible evidence as to what this talks about? These are questions I need to answer for myself, for myself rather. An occupation or a profession that usually involves special training or formal education considered to be a person's last work. Somebody made some remark regarding that and all of that. So you have several definitions you can uh, tie to this uh, and all of that. Now, a career has been defined by organizational be- behavior researchers as an individual's work, work related and other re- relevant experiences, both inside and outside of organizations that form a unique pattern over the individual's lifespan. So there is a pattern. There is a pattern. Now, I think it's appropriate uh, to not just be uh, a thinking Simba, uh, like Scripture Riley said. Uh, I started off my career, uh, I won't say early enough, but I will say I started off, uh, I can say graciously, uh, I was standing there two Sundays ago, and my entire career flashed right before my face like this. And I realized that every role I've occupied in my entire career, I never took a pen or sent an email to apply. It was by recommendation. By recommendation. From the very first job, I was selling laptops. When I got out of youth service in 2001 or thereabouts, selling la- laptops and just doing, working as a, an agent, whatever, what have you. And all of a sudden, a very dear friend of mine who's in the U.S. today, is in New York, uh, was offered a job uh, as a medical representative in a pharmaceutical uh, company. And they gave him Benin. He declined. He doesn't want Benin. He wants to go to Port Harcourt. We did not ask him, do you know of anyone who we can put in Benin? He said, don't worry. It's just a phone call away. And I just driven in uh, in my very sweet BMW. She knows the BMW. Where's my wife? My BMW. <laughs> Drove in. Lit, one in town with shiny alloy wheels. Everywhere I drove past the mirror, like they would turn their head, man, this man is too much. I don't have a job, but I have a BMW. I have a BMW. <laughs> so, called me up. Can you be in Lagos by 12 noon on Saturday? I said, what's happen? That's not a problem. And then be here, I come. Zoomed off to Lagos. Had my interview with them. On the spot, I was employed. Typed my offer and everything. Guess how much was the salary? 30,000 naira a month. That's gross, not net, not take home. That was in 2003 or 2004. 30,000 naira a month. And by the time they did the deduction, it was, my take home was 15,714 naira. I will never forget. <laughs> you can imagine the journey. So at the end of the day, that first month, my sale was 1,250,000. I have all of these things documented. Mr. Sharma shouted. Boniface, regularize his employment now. Right now, doing six month probation. The following month, I got my. I was removed from the probation list. They said we have a star in the making and all of that. So, beyond that point, I was three times rep of the year, three times. Whilst I was doing what I was doing, I was making money because if you're in the pharma industry, you know what I'm talking about. It's all called overage. There's the company price and you have your selling price. I got to a point where I was working three times a week because I had, I had familiarized myself with the doctors and all of that, and they knew me in and out. They knew this guy was very serious. I said, the word S-E-R-O-I-U-S, I was dead serious. Because I remember my first experience, they brought in a truckload of very terrible drugs from Lagos that you have to sell it. I was literally in tears. I looked at my immediate elder brother, how am I going to do this? He said, this is what you signed up for. <laughs> he, was laughing, he was laughing at me. But I took up the challenge got into central hospital, got my uh, got a, uh, detailing aid and leave behind cards and what have you, went through it, through and through. I said, it's me and this work. From one consulting room to another, from one consulting room, to, from one consulting room, every day. I, I had this target on myself every morning. I, on, I will not take my breakfast until I see at least 10 doctors. Every day. Every day. Every day, I will not take my breakfast until I see her. I almost had ulcer because I was so determined. Guess what? All of those superstars within the space that you have these medical reps, they always congregate every morning there in UBTH or in Central to, to just talk about how their friend, their challenge. They come with their flashy official cars. 
I had no official car. I had my BMW with alloy wheels. So I actually drove in just like that with my windsor not tire showing up and all of that. I'm like, I'm here. It will be this one. What does he know and all of that? Well, I was just, we were just there until my prescription started flying like something else. Ah. They started taking me very seriously. That's how I grew, became a regional manager in 2008 from there. On and on and on and on and on and on and on. The rest is history. So all I'm saying is, Scripture says that CS die a man who is diligent in his business. He shall not stand before me men. He shall stand before kings and princes. Uh, the tendency to stay cold and the tendency to become complacent uh, because the environment is not favorably disposed to you. Uh, don't give in to that because at the end of the day, uh, by the time people start counting their blessings, uh, the other person is counting his ears of our frustrations. So let's move beyond that. So uh, let's just move forward. A job and a career are in a difference. I did say it a while ago. There is some difference. Let's just quickly scroll through this. Uh, why jobs and careers both enable us to earn enough money to support ourselves and our families? They do not mean the same thing. It is important to know whether you are looking for a job or for a career to plan your professional goals. You have to clearly define that. Uh, are you looking for a job or a career? Because first and foremost, what uh, precedes those conversations uh, is what, what is my vision statement? What's my plan? I've asked that a couple of times in this environment. Do you have a, a mission statement, so to speak? Uh, my mission statement is in my head, and I will it wake me up any time, any day, I will tell you. Uh, there's a part of my mission statement that I always read out when I have this sort of conversation, and I, I always tell myself that in my lifetime, I intend to become a top flat executive and a major player in global technological advancement that cuts across all spheres of human existence. I said, in a bid to achieve that laudable height, I desire to work in an environment that is intellectually stimulating and technology driven. An environment that provides opportunity for career and personal development. So at the end of the day, once you is clearly defined, you see it, then, like scripture rightly said, write the vision, make it play. That he may run, that what read at it. Some of us are running, we don't know where we are running to. I remember Bishop Fabi that also when we used to have conversations then. Uh, there's this analogy he usually gives of a man who was running. That was the man with the message. So the man was running, he ran through a crowd. So they thought somebody was chasing the man. Other persons that they're running. So somebody now asked the one that was running after that one. Why are you running? Why are you running to? You know, he said he just saw them running. He's equally running. And another person joined them. Everybody just running. Run. The person that started that race had the mission, knew where he was going to. But every other person that joined him had no clue as to what was going on. So it's important to define, like, explain role and style. It has to be clearly defined. Today is Babin Salon. Tomorrow is. Bitcoin, the day after is crypto, then following that, we have MMM. Then at the end of the day, it's all a wild wind of activities, work done is zero. And the bottom line is, let me say this, competition. You want to hammer like everybody, like the man next door. You want to hammer. And at the end of the day, uh, there's a lot of misgivings here and there. Uh, we all know the story of the bamboo tree and all of that. How seven years takes root down, and by the time it's growing up, in one week it's already getting to 15 meters and what have you. That's what it is. We have to take root deep then before we're thinking of growing. For some of us, we need to recalibrate our priorities. What is, really, what, what is of importance to me? Yesterday, uh, my wife's elder sister just took a stroll around our neighborhood. Uh, with General and Jamie and all of that. So they were telling me the things they saw and all of that. Because the only thing I know, I drive into my apartment, it's me and my laptop. <laughs> all the, I don't know what happens. I spent five years in the Rockwell Estate. They are, I hear them saying road A, road B, road D. I'm asking them, where is the road? Where is, how does it look like? I don't know. Because focus creates energy. I say, this one thing I do, Apostle Paul, this one thing, one thing I do, one thing, one thing I 
do. Oh. Am I making any sense at all? I'm just asking, please, guys. Because I don't want to become a nuisance to you. I just, I'm just asking that. Uh, am I done with that? Yes, I am. A closer look at the subject. What's a job? And what is a career? A job is work you perform to earn money to support your basic needs. It can be full-time or part-time and maybe short-term. Where is my wife? I think I really, I really need them glasses, so, because I'm really struggling to read some of these things right now. I don't know what's happening. It's not the, this thing. Yeah? So, it's about... Yours sincerely, sir. Thank you very much. I'm probably just quitting my eyes right now. This Negro is getting old, man. <laughs> a job is work you perform to earn money to support your basic needs. It can be full-time or part-time and maybe short-term. That's a job. That's a job. But some of us, this, this can be called a career, it can be called work and all of that. Uh, just take it back. Let's um, uh, let me just try and manage. Just take it back and let's run through this. Because I have a couple of videos I want to share with us. So you might need to learn certain skills connected with the role, but not all jobs require a specialized degree or advanced training. But there could be some one or two trainings and what have you, but it doesn't necessarily need, have to be a very, very uh, uh, a comprehensive training, uh, so to speak, and all of that. So uh, that's pretty much what it is for a job. And let's get into what a career is. A career is a long-term professional journey you may determine based on what? Based on what? Your passion. Your passion. I, I want to quickly uh, 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 put it at the background. Uh, sadly, sadly, the perception is there are no jobs. Sadly. Additionally, the perception is there are not enough jobs. Sadly, the perception is even the jobs that are available, they are way out of my league. These are, these are idiosyncrasies we have in our head. You know, while Pastor Yinka was preaching this morning, I started ruminating over that since yesterday or the first day. I said to him, I said, there are jobs all over the place. There are jobs all over the place. All over. Because we are, we are an exception to the rule. There are jobs all over. The, see, say it as it is. There are jobs all over the place. That's the truth. There are jobs all over the place. I can tell you the number of requests I get, perhaps on a weekly basis, as to, okay, and we want to do this. There was one, M Pharma, they needed country head uh, for their diagnostics and all of that. I turned it down because I'm, I was sick and tired of chasing after uh, whatever and all of that. There's another one, BSV vaccines. They are into vaccines and um, uh, serums, uh, drugs for uh, preeclampsia, uh, resource negative, you know, mother to child transmission, those resource, whatever and all of that. So they are biopharmaceutical, not pharmaceutical, biotechnology, biopharmaceutical and all of that. So uh, the head of the region, Middle Eastern Africa, used to be my boss back then in Cadillac Pharmaceuticals, who wanted me to be country manager, uh, Nigeria, Ghana. I'm still ruminating over it because I have my hands full right now. So the bottom, the bottom line is there are jobs all over the place, ladies and gentlemen. The question is it is better to be prepared for an opportunity that has not yet showed up than for an opportunity to be all up in your face and meet you unprepared. And one of the ways such opportunity meets you unprepared is because you don't believe that there are jobs all over the place. We don't believe it. But there are jobs all over the place. Do you know why I'm saying so? Because if you say it, it's created. It is created. Even when uh, with your optical eyes, oh, there are no jobs. But you said there are jobs all over the place. There are jobs all over the place. Look at the prophet and his servant. When he told the servant, look, we have more with us than those who are against us and all of that. And he said, Lord, Open his eyes. And by the time the eye was open, all of a sudden he saw chariots. 
I can just imagine in my head the guy will be jumping like this. Oh yeah, bring it on. Bring it on and all of that. Because we have to see it. Like Miles Moreau said, eyes that look are very common. But eyes that see are very rare. Very rare. So what are we seeing? What are we looking at? We might be having bodies we discuss complete sports together. Uh, we talk about uh, 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 Ronaldo trying to leave uh, Juve right now. He has to go back to Real Madrid. And Manchester is quite beating for him and all that. Having those, I've not thought, you don't have any problem with having those conversations. But just know that whilst you are having those conversations, Ronaldo is getting ready to buy the next Bugatti Veyron. Over, over a billion or a million, era, or a million dollars or whatever. And whilst we are here discussing complete sports, and he's going to move. No, he's going to back her. No back her. He's going to do another. As he's saying it, at the end of the week, one million pounds. He received a lot. One million pounds in his account and all of that. You know, I went through uh, a post sometime last year. Uh, some corporate CEO, CEOs in Nigeria, what their annual, annual uh, take home. I saw the one for Owando. I even saw engineer Joseph Makoju. Uh, the former minister of uh, former minister of uh, 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 what do you call it? Power. He was equally an advisor under Obas and John and all of that. At that age, he was he any well, well over 75 million naira per annum. Is it 75 million or over 130 million naira per annum? I kept that post. Not because I wanted to be covetous. I kept that post because I, I saw what was possible as a result of value. At that level, people are not paying for their faces. Joseph Margot is not as handsome as myself. They are paying for value. 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 And the question is, uh, Miles Moreau has always said, he said, look, never strive to be a person of, um, uh, how did they put it? They always strive to be a person of value. Because people are paying for value. That's why I said, when you want to leave an organization, they ask when you have been a liability. When they ask why you've been an asset. So ladies and gentlemen, let's sit down and let us reason together. We need to reevaluate our priorities. We need to reevaluate our standards. Because at the end of the day, if you don't put a price on yourself, I'll, my wife is not here. Let me just say a couple of things. When I got to Cairo, I met the chief people's officer. How much are you going to pay me? I told him $10,000. Well, like, he shifted his chair like this. He said, you are, but I said, yes. If I don't put a price on myself, you said it for me. I can't. I said, think about it. And I went to back to my hotel room, Sophie's Hotel. Got back, uh, you know, uh, we just can't do that for now. Uh, uh, we are going to, uh, but this is what we can do and all of that. And I looked at the numbers. I said, okay, uh, we'll start from there. But we'll start graduating upwards and all of that. So uh, what I'm saying in essence is, when I saw that post, Oando, Honeywell, uh, which other one? Uh, more, more than half of them were banks. FCMB, GT Bank. I'm like, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. What is this in this country where people are trying to exit the system? But you have folks who are. Now, the question is ah, you know, they've been, my dear, please, I want to I beseech you by the mercies of God. Never, ever underestimate yourself that you cannot be that person. Never. 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 Never ever underestimate yourself that you can never be that person. It's gross. See, let's not put ourselves in that web. I was having a conversation with these two gentlemen. You know one of the key problems we have? Scripture says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. That's a very good scripture. But at the same time, Scripture says that the, the words of what? The words of is led up for who? So if I'm having Bible studies, I'm sitting down, I'm having uh, what do you call it again? Uh, I'm just having those uh, uh, rituals. It's not going to, those things are going to develop legs and come to me. I have to network. I have to engage. I'm not saying live their life, but at least when you solve a problem for these people, they, know, they begin to have a sense of the kind of value you have. I remember vividly, I was in my office 
in 2017 or 2018, if I can remember vividly, I just got a call from Roche Central Office at Mobilaji Bank Anthony from, uh, how was this guy's name again? I thought you just called me. Hello, Mr. Pius. Uh, how are you? I'm fine. Yeah, what is it again? I hope I'm on your good books today. Say, ah, you've always been in my good books. But say, we just finished our meeting from SA, from South Africa, and the only comment that was made in that meeting was that if you want to get anything done in Nigeria, go to that man. My brother, that is a testimony. I wasn't there. I wasn't there. If you want to get anything done in Nigeria, is that man. She said she just called me to appreciate my person. That look, even folks in South Africa knows the value I bring to the table. That is why they are like, man, if you have any, you are at a crossroad, we have a problem solver. It's right there. And he's very humble about it. So, what I'm saying in essence is this, ladies and gentlemen, is we all have it in us. No, somebody said, fan the flame. Fan, the flame is there, but you have, you have to fan the flame. Can you, let's minimize it so that I can run fast. Okay, now, it says, it is the path you embark upon to fulfill your professional goals and ambitions. The question I'm asking is this, do we have it written down? It's a problem I have on my team. And I keep firing them every day. Because I cannot entertain weaklings. I'll give you the opportunity. They're going to call CPD, Continual Professional Development. You do your appraisals and all of that. Okay, let's focus on this. Let's do, let's do that. If after I give you all of those long groups and you still sort of food dragging and things like that, then you ain't worth being a part of the team. So you exit where you entered. So what I'm saying in essence is this, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's very, very important to have it clearly defined. If I ask us now, how many of us have our mission statement, I have my goals, I have my deeds clearly written and all of that. It's important. It's extremely important. I have a family goal. I have a family goal. Apart from my professional goal, I have a family goal. That's why at times they feel that these guys, they are regimented. They are not regimented. They have to understand. This is the way it works in this environment. So that you can align yourself at the end of the day. So ladies and gentlemen, please, if you don't have any, take your time. And this is a way to go about it. What interests you? What are the things you hate that you would like to solve? One of the things I hate that I like to solve is what I'm doing right now. I just hate to see people become just like that. No. It aches my heart. Everywhere I go. You can imagine when I was at ISN Rush, after selling equipment, you know what I do? I do capacity development as CSRO. At United Heart Hospital, Dr. Uwosu, a cardiologist that relocated to Nigeria after several years of practice and all of that. His entire setup, training for the staff members, free of charge, I did it. Shell, the same thing. St. Mary Hospital, a letter, tw twice. National Association of uh, Hospital and Administrative, Administrative Pharmacists in Asaba, FOC, free of charge. Because at the end of the day, as you are doing it, somebody gets to... I remember I was doing a presentation on FMC Asaba, and a doctor pulled me out. I said, okay, why don't you try lecturing? I said, okay, I can't lecture because I don't want courtists to come and ask, ask me for mar marks and all of that. So the bottom line is, this is what I do. I can't help see people just be there. You can't be there. Our destiny is not there. It says the path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto what? A perfect day. So if there is anything in my life that doesn't align with that, then I need to ask myself what's going on. Something's out of order. Something's out of order. So ladies and gentlemen, it's important we factor that into the equation as well. Now, uh, you may require a certain level of education and training to achieve these goals. That's the truth. Uh, if you want to be proficient in your practice, uh, Pastor Taffy is a is it CFA? What do you call them? CFA. Is it certified? Uh, is it CFA or FCA? Thank you. Chartered accountant. So there are modules and whatever. My former CFO, you know Mr. Babajide? Babajide uh, is the number two or number three or number four person in uh, those, whatever they call it. He used to be my CFO. Now he's with oil and gas. Uh, I, don't, I don't know which of the oil and gas. I fell out of 
sync with uh, the vice president of finance, Omar Bedawi, the guy is very, very obnoxious. That's the truth. So he couldn't cope with him. He had to move on with his life. Such a, a fine gentleman. Uh, he used to be number three, number four person there. They used to have several meetings in my office back then and all of that. So uh, what I'm saying is there are certain trainings. And the truth, truth be told, several of these trainings at times are free of charge online. And the question is, what are we doing with it? I'm pursuing one right now. It's a scholarship. Scholarship. I've been shortlisted. My interview is next week Friday. And once I get it, I ain't paying one dime. And it's about $15,000. Scholarship. Quantic. Executive MBA. There's a specific area that I want. That's why I'm running after it. They asked me in my interview, okay, if there's any person in the world today you want to sit and have a conversation with, who is it? I said, Elon Musk. You know Elon Musk? I said, where is Mrs. Emma? What's her name? Is she here? Uh, my leader. Is she around? Oh, she's, she's gone home. I, she was telling me, let us extend prison and worship to 30 minutes. I said, no way. It's going to be 20 or 25 minutes. Let's make do with that. You know why? Work expands to fill the time allotted to it. If you want to, if, it, if you say you are going to clean your house in 30 days, it will take 30 days. If you say you are going to clean your house in 3 hours, it will take 3 hours. So work expands to fill the time allotted for it. This is what we are going to do. Make the most out of it and get people blessed. We start compromising the quality at the end of the day. That's what it is. So this is not this is your time. time. Mm -mm. Work with what you have and make the most out of it. So, uh, man, individuals pursuing careers often have set salaries with benefits such as retirement plans, pensions, and bonuses. Did my eyesight just started messing up right now, or I'm nervous? <laughs> <laughs> Individuals pursuing careers often have set salaries with benefits such as retirement plans, pensions, and bonuses. Uh, that's pretty much what it is. Uh, uh, if I mention what I get as my pension at times, it's humbling. Humbling. So, quite frankly, it's, I've come a long way, to be very honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. I've come a long way from 15,714 naira to a couple of zeros and all of that. So, the thing is, How many of us have seen a tombstone? A tombstone. You have the bets, date of birth, and the date of death, and in between is what a straight line. That is where we are, you and I right now. That's where we are. So how well and how good that straight line? We do what we have to do with it. It's all up to us. Really, all up to us. Let's quickly do this. Ah. Oh. A career might last for your entire life. You could hold numerous jobs under many employers in your chosen industry that you progress through during your entire career. What that simply means is this. In a career, you have bouts of jobs. But with a clearly defined objective, I am moving. Now, I'm, I'm in healthcare. From healthcare, I've done pharmaceuticals. I've done in vitro diagnostics. I've done biotechnology. I've done medical services, uh, medical diagnostic services. So that's where I am right now. So I am vacillating just within the healthcare space and all of that. And quite frankly, medical diagnostics is the oil and gas of the healthcare industry. Every Tom Dick and Harry right now wants to go into medical diagnostics. How many of us knows Adeni Jones? There's one King Solomon that used to be there. One of those army generals that stole money. Wanted to open the ah, or guys, the agnostic center, come and open, bought CT, bought MRI. Before you know it, they gave him government research for questioning. The whole place is there now. Nothing is happening. So the thing is, uh, there's a lot happening around us, and we need to open our eyes to actually see what's happening. There's a lot going on around us. A lot. A lot. A lot. I can't be spending time in prayer, and my eyes are not open to what's happening around me. It's not possible. I can't. I can't. I can't. I always, if you open my bag now, all the notebooks they use, they finish in their primary, three primary, whatever class. This is their old notes. But I carry all of them along with me because as I'm driving, there's an idea I pack, I write it down. There's an idea I pack, I write it down. If you read some of the DMS book, ideas rule the world. 
Because show me a man that has no money, I will show you a man that has no idea. So the bottom line is, it's we have come to a point where we need to really uh, go through the reprocess, the rebirth, the renew, the reinvent, and all the re's. We have to do it now intentionally and deliberately. I can't. It 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 puts God it it puts God in a bad light to bring the same prayer request in December. 2021. It puts him in a bad light to bring the same prayer request in December 2021 for crossover service. No, my soldiers are imagine. No. 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 A thousand, a thousand times no. A thousand times no. If you must understand, remember the story of Daniel. The day he prayed, the answer was released. But what happened? Somebody heard him. For 21 days. For some of us, it's been four years. Four years. No. That ain't going to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to come to a place. You know what the Bible says of the prodigal son? He said, when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's servants have bread enough to eat and to spare? I'm, I'm here wallowing in the pool of abject poverty. He said, no, I will arise and go to my father. I will arise and go to my father. How to turn a job into a career? Continue learning and developing. It's pretty simple. Always aim to enhance your skills and knowledge. If you know what career path you have you, ha- you want to pursue. Figure out what expertise and experience you need to get there. Once you are aware of the requirements, seek to develop your qualifications, whether through practice in your current job or formal training. Online courses and education. I've mentioned all of this. It's extremely important. Continue learning and developing. Continue learning and developing. Uh, what's his name? Albert Einstein said that the mind that is open to a, new, to a new idea never returns to its original size. Never. And he said this. I was addressing my team on Friday. I had a three-hour meeting with them. I said, look, we are saddled with a new responsibility right now to be able to deliver 200 million naira per month by December 2021. I said, look, if you have the thinking of January, you can achieve that. And I made this quote that the significant problems of our lives cannot be resolved at the level we were where those problems were, crea- were created. You have to raise your level. That's about Einstein. We have to. How many of us know Dr. Mensah Otabio? Dr. Mensah Otabio. Such an erudite scholar in the kingdom. Take your time to listen to him at times. Dr. Mensah Otabio. He's a Ghanaian. Erudite scholar. When trying to determine which skills will benefit your career most, look to successful professionals in that industry. Ask yourself what their strengths, talents, or accomplishments are. Reach out to individuals with similar careers and ask for their advice. If there's anybody I can call my friend in this whole seat, set of nine, this gentleman I sit in here, he keeps asking questions. Keeps asking questions. Keep a- keeps asking questions. You know, there was this perception of, ah, Mr. Pius is a no-go area. <laughs> Don't dare. Don't dare. <laughs> Don't dare. <laughs> when I hear those comments, I just laugh. You don't know the man. <laughs> you don't. So if you know the man, you will not draw such conclusions. But unfortunately, uh, perhaps the disposition that was seen was, came across as men. This guy is a hard nut to crack. Don't even try it. And all of that. But it happens. Different strokes for different folks. So, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> when trying to, you are distracting me. When trying to, de- when trying to damage da- da- uh, which skills will benefit your career most, look to successful professionals in that industry. Ask yourself what their strengths, talents, or accomplishments are. Reach out to individuals with similar careers and ask for their advice. You know, how many of us know Bishop? I know so many men. So, I know so many men of God. I know so many of them. I knew Dr. K eh, in 2007. Because I used to travel campuses. Heroes. 
in 2007. There's, you know, how many of us know Bishop Pius Odioko? He's in worry. God bless you. Bishop Pius Odioko. Who is your pastor? You know his son? Pius. He works he's at the airport. His friends with my kid's brother. He, used, he stayed in a the house then, back then in Benin and all of that. His father used to tell him this. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. This, I know it too much for myself and you don't ask questions. Man, it's a problem. It is a problem. Ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions. If I, so, ask questions so much so that when people see you coming, <laughs> they, are, they are looking for where to go and all of that. That's it. Ask questions. It's extremely important. Now, there's something else I, I put here. Get a mentor. The definition of a mentor is somebody who has been where you are going. The late Archbishop Benson that also puts it this way. He said, never take counsel from a man who has not done at least twice what you are going to try to do once. Get a mentor. If possible, seek out mentor, uh, uh, a mentor or two with an upper level position or experience in your desired field. Ask if they will consider supporting and advising you professionally. It's important, ladies and gentlemen. If I ask now, who are your mentors? If I just pick anybody at random now, let me, I want to look for trouble right now. Uh, Tammy, who are your mentors? Pastor Innocent. <laughs> who are your mentors? Just mention one name. Fantastic. Mr. Abiodo Ogumbade. Mr. Agbade here is one of your mentors. Fantastic. Do you know why he's me- they've had a journey together, true of us. You guys have had some journey. That is it. See, some people are looking for some name up and lights. Oh, it's uh, 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 Tony Robbins or whatever you call them and all of that. It could just be your landlord. <laughs> it could be your landlord. It could be your landlord. <laughs> because you are inspired not to become a tenant all your life. <laughs> so, Ladies and gentlemen, it's important we have mentors in our lives. It's very, very important. There is this woman in Benin, they used to call her Mama Adagoye. She's late now. A powerhouse in CGM. There is no spring star that has gone through the corridors of CGM that will not have something to say about Mama Adagoye. Because she was a mother. In fact, I mirror Pastor Taffy in that person. I'm sorry I'm coming across like this. That is, ask my wife. She said, this, that is Mama Adamoyi Jr. I said, takes you in her arms and so mentor you to the point where you can't say no. You can't say no. You can't. I'm not trying to pour encomiums on anybody here. I'm just saying like it is. So ladies and gentlemen, it's important we grapple with this reality. It's important. Now, while working with a mentor, you may plan specific questions to ask or topics to discuss like career development, blah, blah, blah. Myself and this gentleman will have that uh, conversation severally. Consider your mentor's path, whether a similar one could work for you. Expand your network. Workshops, conferences, seminars, social events can be great places to meet professionals in your field. You can expand your network to have more resources for sharing experiences, learning, gaining advice, and gaining job recommendation. Like I said, every job I am doing today I never applied for any of them. Even the one that is coming tomorrow, I never applied for it. It's just my recommendation. I've seen, how many of us know GuidePoint? If you're on LinkedIn, there is an organization called GuidePoint. GuidePoint. You guys, you guys are not on LinkedIn? Please try and get on LinkedIn. I beg you, please. Be on LinkedIn. Put posts on LinkedIn. I put posts every week on LinkedIn. Pastor Yinka is laughing. He knows I need him to be on LinkedIn. He knows very well. I need him to be on LinkedIn. GuidePoint is a multinational uh, research organization. They pay people for interviews. At times, 200 euros, 300 dollars, 500 dollars for just an hour or two hours asking you questions about a certain industry based off of your antecedents or your pedigree, so to speak. So you, uh, you haggle price as to... There's a lady I'm speaking with in Germany right now. Uh, there's one I'm speaking with... Uh, is it from Uganda? I can't remember now. There's another one. The one from Germany, there's another one as well. They are not getting too much. Because you have this arrangement and all of that. All they have to do is 
transfer the payment to your domiciliary account and uh, come and give the Lord a wiper. Huh? So the thing is, uh, let's establish our relevance in those platforms, on those platforms rather. Uh, let people understand that we are there uh, and this is what we're doing and all of that. I make it a point of duty to put weekly posts on LinkedIn. I just put something in there. Folks are liking it. Folks are commenting about it and all that. There's this lady on LinkedIn called Bridget Hyacinth. Anybody that's on LinkedIn, Bridget Hyacinth. You know Bridget Hyacinth. She's an HR professional. She's virtually connected to everybody on the planet. Bridget Hyacinth. So she has several write-ups on LinkedIn and all of that. So I think, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we really have to, I'm not saying go with the tights and all of that. It's just make yourself relevant. Make yourself relevant. Nobody can do it for you. You are the one that will do it for yourself. There's this story I always share with people. Uh, there was a job that was given to everybody, anybody, nobody, and somebody. I will share that in our training uh, for the leaders. I told Pastor Yinka I'm offering my services free of charge. Uh, my subject is maximizing collective collaboration in the organization. That's my subject. Uh, we're going to have it uh, for the leadership and all of that. There are very deep truths I want to share uh, in that engagement and all of that. So let's just get ready for that. I like doing my presentations with pictures so that you can relate to what we're talking about. I do my presentation with videos so that you can relate to what we're talking about, etc., etc. Again, expand your network, ladies and gentlemen. It's important. Expand your network. Expand your network. Expand your network. He was telling me, he saw me, uh, uh, if I got a call from Alaska. Ah, what are you doing with the regional head of G in West Africa? Young, uh, young uh, Eba. I said, he's my body. He's my body. Because we had an engagement in Abuja and in uh, just before, if I, the very day that COVID hit a co hotel, I was in one of the long halls having my session with my doctors. When they started scampering, they said that it's COVID. Somebody brought it from the UK. I saw EK and Messi and Oh my God, God help us in this country. Attitude. Because all of a sudden you are, you are now, your name is now up in light. Nobody matters around you anymore. I was trying to set up my banner and all of that. The pull up banner just passed. <laughs> See cinema. I'm like, what is this? And the whole play was like, mercy, 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 mercy. She has 30 million naira next to her name. So, what are we talking about? It's called. Influence, influence. She's not a social media influencer. It's a full time job. Whether you like it or not, she's getting her a lot. What's the name of that funny soap? Hawaii soap, or what do you call it? The advert they were doing. I've never seen that soap in my life. And I can tell you, give her 10 cartons, you will never use it. But she has gotten her money. So all I'm saying is, whilst these guys are doing stuff, we are holding prayer sessions. And those prayer sessions, it's about time they need to culminate into something. It's about time. You know, I'm saying this in the open right now. I could sense the frustration from Pastor Yinka with all the inputs. The outputs cannot be compared to the inputs thus far. Anybody will be bothered. Anybody will be concerned. Anybody. I have been concerned in the last 24 months. And I said, look, enough is enough. I yelled at a man, what's her name? Franca is not here. Franca and the other gentleman in the choir, my friend in the choir. Bio. I pulled them aside. I said, how long are we going to continue like this? We can't continue like this, guys. We can't. There has to be a deliberate move. Deliberate move. Jobs and careers are interconnected. As a lifetime of jobs makes up the career you choose, most people start at the bottom with an entry-level low-paying job before progressing through different jobs in their industry to gain the experience needed to meet their long-term goals. The skills and knowledge you develop in each role can contribute to success in your career. This is just grammar. All I'm saying is this. Every opportunity you have is to build and develop skills. Uh, there is a, a minister in Bini called Reverend Jeff Iyonawa. He always said this. Walk enhances your value as an individual. Work enhances your value. Enhances your value. That is why you don't play with work. Oh, I did my hand hit this one now. 
my hand just hit it. Well, don't worry. It's okay. Now, that's a, big, that's a big question. Ask yourself if what you are doing today is getting you closer to where you want to be tomorrow. You are the only one that can answer that question for yourself. What I'm doing today, does it get me closer? We're all tired. I can see the expression on our faces. We need to go home, and I, and I really appreciate that. We'll do this again, but like I said, I don't fix the time. You fix the time, tell me when to come, and I'll show up, and all of that. So I just have one or two videos, five minutes or thereabouts. How many of us have watched the movie called uh, Coach Carter? Coach Carter. Samuel L. Jackson. God bless you. You saw how he turned those irresponsible boys to become men of influence. Uh, it's a true life story. Uh, it's a basketball team. When they engaged the services, the team, there was nothing to write home about them. Uh, they were doing badly in the academics. They were doing badly in court. They were doing badly in their games and what have you. So he came in and got them in line. Transformational leadership. Got them in line. How many of us have watched uh, Facing the Giants? We've watched Facing the Giants. Okay. See, I don't just watch. I have several excerpts of, this, of these movies I use as inspiration. They are all over YouTube. All over the place. YouTube is not to watch pornography. There are a lot of materials in that environment to make your life a better whatever. You see what when I did my my presentation on, on my reflections. You see all those sounds. I get them from YouTube. So my eight hours. But there is one I have. It's just scriptures. Eight hours. I play it to sleep. Why will I know tomorrow somebody will tell me who are you? Which mouth? I can't As he's saying it, the cost is dropping. <laughs> so... He said he was going somewhere and they had a flat tire. He looked at his driver. Do you pay tight? Because as far as I'm concerned, you know, people have gone to that point where it's very personal. Extremely personal. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have materials out there that we can actually... I'm just letting some of my secrets out to you guys. All this, there is nothing fantastic about all this, whatever one is doing right now. I've been doing this since 1999. The size of my library, I'm saying it with so much effrontery and pomposity, is well over 750,000. The size of my library. But I'm tired of reading hard copy now. I'm reading audio books. They are all over the internet. They are all over the internet. 21 irrefutable law of leadership. The law of the lead is the very first law there. Today matters. You have several of Maxwell's book out there. Several of Kenneth Hagin's book out there. Both in audio and e-books. They are out there. My data is not to watch African magic. It's not to watch uh, is it Nigerian idol now? That's the inti now. Ike Osaki Odua. Ike has collected his contract. It's in his pocket. Very soon I will go to Dubai on vacation. We are there watching Nigerian idol. When are, we, when are you going to become the idol that we will watch? So ladies and gentlemen, I think it's very, very important we do this. This is a video right now. So drive, I, This video is called Drive Yourself. Just watch the video. and It's a very short video. and uh, There are some lessons from it. So that, Like I said, the person I came to address is you, not your career. When we are done addressing you, your career will get in line. Let's deal with you first. So we need to get the architecture together. We need to get everything in place. Then once I'm in place, now let me give you an instance. There was a young child. Uh, the father was presenting just the way I usually prepare for my Monday meetings and all that. All kinds of crazy presentations, crazy Excel sheets, and what have you. So you have Jamie coming around, coming to trouble me. So I said, how am I going to describe this boy now? So I just carried one newspaper. I tore the newspaper. The newspaper had map of the world. So I tore the newspaper. I said, go and arrange it. I knew at least it would take Jamie a time to, before he gets back to me. But Jamie was very smart. He looked at the new pieces of newspaper. By the time he turned them around, he saw the face of a man at the back. So what Jamie did was to put the man together. And the word in my heart. He folk with talent just wasting away. You see that young man that used to trouble us in church? Uh, F.A. Is he F.A.? What's his name? It's a bundle of talents. 
But the question is, you cannot be in an environment where you get anointed messages, you have anointed believers, you have anointed conversations, and your life is out of line. What's going on? In the world is going on. During the lockdown, I didn't sleep. It was all over my business. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's get ourselves together. The person, you know, one of the things I used to tell myself, the person that is heading Pfizer in, Pfizer in Nigeria is an offense to me.
I've got a black, a black, a black belt. She has double master's degree. Uh, she's a she's a certified pilot. Pilot, certified pilot. What else again? Uh, I the last one. And she said something jocularly that uh, the only thing she's looking for right now is somebody who will ask for her hand in marriage. <laughs> <laughs> she said that on the light side note. So what I'm saying is that you let your job mind is now. I have a video on no escape. Uh, in one of the videos, part of the video, they use some foul language. That's why at times I don't want to put it in this sort of setting. They use the F word. So I don't, I felt it totally inappropriate to have that place. I thought the message, wait, wait, wait. Any progress, sir? We have a glitch. Slight uh, glitch. Okay. How, how many minutes is that? Uh, it's a uh, play, let me see. Let me just see the. You all want the video, am I right? Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll post it. You'll post it? Okay. Yeah. So, that thank you is like, please get out of my face. I need to go home. Get out of my face. I need to go home. I hear you. I hear you. Check out your face right now. We're having second service. So, uh, one of the things, one of the things, <laughs> so, uh, my, my closing remarks are this. Uh, you need to give yourself an assignment. Uh, life is more than really easy. It's more than really easy. It's really easy. Uh, I remember when Ungoji Okonje where I became the OTO president. And so a lot of ladies were just putting, oh, they are making African women proud. Somebody not posted. She didn't get it by fake books and fake and then back, back ends and what do you mean? She didn't get one that. She was absolutely dedicated. Absolutely dedicated. Her parents were both professors in, uh, in, uh, in UI then, if I can remember vividly. And before she went to the US, she wanted to read geography. That's what she wanted to read, geography. She went to Harvard and all of a sudden, I'm going to economics and the rest of history. So, guys, uh, this is not the time for us to see. There are times, I'm not saying you don't have fun. But once you're having fun, please, have some value. There are so many sources. Have some value. People pay you for your values. They don't pay you because you are good looking. It's your value. I have folks that have Alito office in my office as a mouth order. But the reason why they are still on the employment of the organization is because they are having value. But you can call them to the side as a guy, buy some toothpaste. That your insignificance in your perception, insignificant job or insignificant role, is going to define where you are right now. Please don't call it insignificant. One of the bishops in Church of God Mission was a driver to the late Archbishop Bishop Ojo. It's a leg of now. You know Bishop Ojo. He was Archbishop Idaosa's personal driver. Who would have imagined a driver is now a member of the College of Bishops? He's the one that feels like the man of God that is coming. But if he's speaking of it, you won't think that he was a driver or whatever he was going to drive. What I'm saying is this we've got it in mind. We have to put it in work. Put it in use. There is no job to die or just. You admire every car that passes through the door. When are you going to visit the car? Admire every house when you go out of evangelism. I'm not the Jehovah's Witness who is waiting to inherit somebody else's house. <laughs> 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 